This is a talk about Ayatana Indicators. Ayatana Indicators is some upstream initiative that I've started. And before I actually go into technical details, it's going to be a really technical talk about indicators. I want to show you what indicators actually are. So, so um, the indicators concept actually comes from the KDE people. Um, and they thought, we have all these, we have these zoo, we have this zoo of applications actually dogging into the, some sort of a thing that's called system tray. And the system tray is, well, here, where people normally find their clock and the battery status, shutdown button, stuff like that. So, and quite a while ago, like 10 years maybe from now, the KDE people actually thought may, maybe let's have a uniform layout for this. Let's do it. So it looks, let's do it in a way so it looks really, really being one thing and not being loads of different applications docked to the panel and when you click on one of those menus that, that drop down from, from the icons, um, like I do here, with the, with the recent concept that's in Debian, except from the GNOME desktop, it's like one could be in gray, the other one could be in a dark theme, the next one could be with a different font, so they all look similar depending on the implementation of the actual tool you are listing there, depending on what widget toolkit is used, what the theming for this widget toolkit is used. Sometimes you have a matching theming between QD applications and GDK applications. So the KDE people actually thought, let's have some infrastructure in the panel that allows other people to incept the menu information that should be rendered but the desktop itself, or the, the panel actually, renders this, this menu and renders all the different like tick boxes, sub-menus, etc. So, and then around 2007, 2008, uh, something like that was initiated by uh, Canonical for Ubuntu to actually port this content to GTK desktop-based services. So, uh, this is a Mate desktop, and it's based now on GTK3. It was based on GTK2 formerly. It was derived from GNOME2, which was also a GTK-based desktop. And um, they started actually releasing that, I think, with Ubuntu 10.04. Um, so they had these nice icons, and you can also go through that with a mouse. Hang on, let's move my mouse pointer outside of that. So it, it's, re it's really one application actually showing you several icons belonging to several applications. And, um, and it's all rendered the same. So it looks actually really uniform. Um, so what happened to that? It never appeared, well, it's sort of, there was some initiative in Debian to actually have that appear. You find my notes on Gobi, by the way. How many Mate users are here, or desktop users, actually? Desktop. So Mate desktop, XFCE, GNOME, KDE, OK. Unity. Unity. <laughs> I, I3, <laughs> Unity. Unity 7, I suppose. Yeah. OK, good. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I have some, if you, if you have the gobby, if you have the Gobby document open, please visit these links. I won't show all of them here because we have 20 minutes or 15 minutes maybe for the talk left. And I can't show you all these examples of how this all happened in history. But I put all the references actually um, on the document. And also, I always for each chapter, sort of, I have a um, notes section. So you can put notes in there and actually let me know what you think about this stuff. Um, so that is the original spec document uh, from the KDE world, and it's like from 2004, 2005, I can't remember really. So that, um, that, that is a technical document that shows how it should work in theory. It was the white paper draft. And from then on, the people started actually developing that, developing that for, for Plasma, which is KDE 4. So, and then um, the Ayatana name has been picked from a project at Canonical. And it's the Aya team or Ayatana project on Launchpad that actually combines all the different efforts by 
uh, in Ubuntu, not by Canonical, but in Ubuntu, to bring forth upstream software. So in Ubuntu, you have one initiative actually working on upstream code, and then the other initiative is working on downstream packaging. But you can't really differentiate. So because it's done in a, sorry, but it's done in a dirty way. The split between upstream and downstream is absolutely not clear anymore. So you see patches in the downstream packages that appear in the distribution directly that actually should go in the upstream repos. You find upstream projects with release tarballs dating back two years, but in the, in the distribution there is more recent software of that same thing. So it's a bit of a mess. And also, um, so let's go through the URLs first. Um, so, for, so there's this general Ayatana team page, which is quite informative. The Unity desktop, Unity 7, is also part of that. Um, then there, is, there are quite some links, actually, that show you wide sketches, describe the design, describe the idea behind um, Ubuntu indicators. So that is the KDE indicators now in GTK. Um, and um, you, you might want to look at that. There are also some screenshots, but it's basically what you see here um, in, in my little desktop example. So what is really nice to look at are the sketches, because um, there was some graphic designer that actually drew everything on paper before actually it was implemented. So they are really, really nice to look at. And, and, and the, why I'm actually spending time on that, which is my private time, uh, I think the concept is great for all desktops except GNOME, because GNOME has a different, they do it differently now. So they had indicators for some time available, but they superseded them by, by their own concept. So that's fine, but like for desktops like Mate, maybe also LXQD, uh, XFCE, all these more like, for us older people, desktops, I'd say, but not necessarily, um, that is a really cool concept. And of course, I'm talking about the GTK-based desktops. Um, can, can we have a mic? Hello? Can we have a mic? Thank you. Yeah, check your mates later, please. I mean, the indicators did grow additional interface, and they are portable to Qt4 and Qt5 and QML. But that support is now stalled again, but it's out there. So you could, you, so like Alex Qt, uh, the L LXD with Qt, it can have indicators as well, for example. Is there a plugin for the panel? Yes. Good. Okay. So at the very end, actually, they, it all comes back on, on a couple of libraries, shared libraries, that you have to build your panel application against and the application that should dock into the panel. So it's actually all there. Um, and, and that's, that's my reason for giving this talk. I want to sort of bundle the efforts and, you know, bring people together. And uh, maybe if they're not in the room, they watch this video and, um, and we get some feedback later on. Um, okay, so that's the history. Original target GNOME, GNOME version 2, then ported to Unity 7 based on GTK 3. And then with what we are seeing now the whole thing is about to be abandoned by Canonical directly. So there are community groups that continue maintenance of the Unity 7 desktop, like a good corporation partner, Jeremy B Bicker, um, Bicher, I would say in German. Um, so so he's, he's really, it's, it's about getting Unity 7 really uh, to survive and having it as a non-Ubuntu-centric desktop, hopefully at the end. Um, So I already said that Canonical is a sufficient upstream for Debian, quite often, actually. So, uh, for example, I was actually packag packaging, or I was, I was doing, or I took over the libdbus menu package. And I said, okay, what, what upstream shall I use for that? So I don't really like, you know, doing VCS packages from BZR, because I don't know what branch to really use for that, etc. So I said, well, I want the same version that's in Ubuntu. So I used the table that I find in the Ubuntu archives pool, so which is, which is really suboptimal, because then the Ubuntu maintainer said, oh, I copy the one that's in Debian. <laughs> so, so it's actually a circular a thing. Uh, I, I can't really tell when there's a new option release, because I look at what is in Ubuntu, which is the same, which is in Debian. So it's, that was a bad idea, actually, um, at that point. But there's no better source. 
except the BZR, but which branch and who's maintaining that? So, yeah, so it's, it's dodgy. It's dodgy, really dodgy. So, and you can also tell all the packages actually that are not really optimal for being pulled over to Debian because they use Debian source format one, which means you don't actually need an or original table. You can just build the source folder with a Debian folder inside uh, and you can upload your package. So it shows that this downstream upstream split is not clear at all at the moment in Ubuntu. Um, so yeah, you find the outdated table releases on Launchpad, which is really frustrating. You don't have a, you, you always have the Debian folder in the upstream projects, which is also unclear then. Uh, you, you actually have an upstream repository with a Debian folder inside and Debian patches in that. Oh, wow. So why not commit the stuff to the upstream code directly, but place patches into Debian patches? So that's really, I mean, it's, it was, it's actually like, what? <laughs> and that goes all the time like that. So stopping to run now. Um, Another issue actually with um, upstream projects initiated by Canonical is, on the one hand, they are great. Most of them are really, most of them, not all, but some of them are really, hey, that's good. So there's a good concept behind that. The, the inner design is done really well. The, the code looks good. Um, and then there's a strategy change in Ubuntu, and it gets <laughs> dropped. So um, if you, if you build projects on top of that, you never know if you actually have to maintain the code yourself sometime, um, which is a pity. It's, I mean, it's, it's good ideas coming up, and um, in the past we have seen it several times, um, also with the Unity Greeter, with the, which, which is the login manager in Ubuntu, and the remote uh, logon com, uh, com, um, capabilities in the Greeter, so you can actually use Unity Greeter and log into free RDP, ser or RDP servers or Citrix servers. I think that was not finished, that work, but the RDP server login worked. So it was also dropped. So, and I know people that actually build up a business model on that. So which is, which is you know, I mean, hmm, good. OK, so there was, in Debian, there is a PKG Ayatana project. It's a project on Alioth, and it's the Ayatana developers in real, with a real name. Um, and they actually started looking at what is done in Ubuntu and backporting or porting that to Debian. And um, so that effort started at some time, and then it became habit in Ubuntu that you actually build upstream projects that depend on GTK in Ubuntu, which has tons of patches, and that, it that these upstream projects actually fa fail to build if they are not building against the GTK3 library in Ubuntu. Uh, so that's not really usable on Debian either. Um, and at that point, I guess, the efforts within Debian came to a halt. I'm not quite sure. I, I spoke to the people who were doing that, and they said, oh, we are not interested anymore. So. Um, it would be interesting, actually, if, if, there is, if, there is, if there could be actually someone to actually pick up this former initiative and um, say, OK, let's do it differently. And then those ideas in Ubuntu, having them in Debian is actually great. So and what I did, um, I had, it, it started with a customer that wanted um, this remote logon capability in Unity Greeter but for X to go servers. Thank you. Um, so I worked on that. And the patches never got upstream because there is an upstream. Yeah, th at the end, there is an upstream. There was a time when there was an upstream, and they didn't get upstreamed. So um, and, and then I said, OK, if there's no upstream that accepts my packages, uh, and the customer is a good friend of mine, and he uses that in his business, why not? Well, let's look at Unity Greeter, how it actually works. So I actually forked it and fixed the remote logon stuff in there. But I didn't have the indicator icons, because in Unity Greeter, you also have these icons here. They look a bit differently and have a bit, reduce of, a bit of reduced functionality, but they basically do the job. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
So, and then I, I said, okay, well, let's get those icons in there. Which ended up in me actually forking all the lib indicator, lib app indicator, uh, indicator session, indicator power, indicator, blah, 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 and strip all the Ubuntu centric code from that. So it builds on Debian, and it possibly also builds on Fedora and on Obsuzu if you want to. So de Ubuntu nice code, that's the. You're not, you're not on. Please switch your mic on. Hello? Yeah, good. Uh, is all of that in Debian now? It is in Debian Experimental, yes. In Experimental? In Experimental, yes. So I can just sync that to Ubuntu? No. Why not? Because we'll need proper uploads, and I did some more work upstream, and then we need to do proper packages. So one reason for me being here is actually asking you, is that a good idea, what I'm actually doing? So my, I mean, I'm spending my time on that. So is that something that could be wanted in Debian and, uh, well, also beyond Debian? From Ubuntu point of view, um, ideally I would want to drop the functionality that depends on the phone in some of the indicators, like the URL dispatcher dependencies. And I have de been doing that already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I want to remove all of those, but I want to keep the indicators such that they do work on the Ubuntu Mate port and the Ubuntu XFC port and etc. Mm -hmm. and, and for that I do need to pull indicators from somewhere mm -hmm. which do not have URL dispatch and all the phone dependencies but they're just stock normal that indicators. Yeah. And ideally I would want to just force sync yeah. from Debian because there's no more upstream and launch pad. So if there's something, show I would take it. Show me your name tag, please, so that we can sit. So what's your name? I Dimitri. Oh, OK. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> Good. Um, yeah, so the basic idea behind, behind Ayatana Integrators is actually it's a fork. And it's actually a namespace fork completely. So it's not lib indicator anymore. It's lib Ayatana indicator. And actually, you can install the lib indicator and the Ayatana indicator just next to each other. They don't share any file in common. And that's actually the goal for all subcomponents that actually belong to that. So the idea is actually having that all in Debian, making it work in Debian, make, and uh, I'll intend to actually file bug reports against all packages um, that, um, that use lib indicator and lib app indicator and switch over with a patch to, to the Ayatana indicators. So, um, and and the idea is actually that all people interested in indicators as well in Ubuntu as well as in, in Debian, that they or in Fedora and where else it might spread, that they actually come together in the upstream uh, um, world of Ayatana indicators and that they actually just file pull requests on GitHub in the upstream code and that we do regular releases, pull them into Debian, pull them into Fedora and then have them, you know, nearly everywhere. So that is the basic idea that I have. And the reason for giving this talk is I don't want to do it alone. So um, I think I found someone who's interested in joining in. Um, if there are more out there, I'd be really happy to actually see you and, and talk to you and receive mail from you. So, um, so to get in touch, actually. So source code is on GitHub. Um, and it's currently under the realm or the organization roof of the Ar Ar Arctica project which might be not optimal, so I'm very open to actually opening up an Ayatana project or on a, well, whatever the name is and, and collect the stuff there. So it doesn't have to be under that, it's just it was an infrastructure we already had. And uh, we have nightly builds of the code already, so it might also be just a good idea to leave it there because, because some workflows are already implemented and it would be quite a bunch of work to actually move that away to, and migrate it to some other namespace. Um, so, and, and the, the status quo actually is that all indicator-related libraries now work on non-Ubuntu systems. And um, I have ported the gen generic application indicator, which allows third-party applications to dock into the indicator area. Okay. Um, and there is still some, some more work to do. 
And basically, um, you can contact me at Sunweaver at Debian Org, Sunweaver on IRC Freenode, um, or use the PKG Ayatana mailing list um, to get in touch. Thanks for your attention.